Terima kasih saya ucapkan uh, thank you to yang berhormat uh, Saari Sungai for uh, his um, refreshing um, points regarding the main topic of our program on Islam and reform, how does it relate to politics, how does it relate to religion, and yeah, I think his main conclusion on the continuous process of learning, and learning, relearning, that would uh, fit in a lot with the whole um, topics and programs that we are going to have over the coming few days. Okay, because of, on the interest of time, I, I, I do want to open up for one round of uh, questions, comments, feedbacks, uh, which we can address to uh, YB Sari Sungeb and also to our other uh, speakers in our hall today. I got one question in particular for, uh, for, for now. Anyone else may uh, have any questions? I got one question which I think uh, maybe um, YB Saari Sungai can respond or perhaps the other speakers as well. Knowing that the process of reform either when it comes to religion or politics is a long process. And even in the case of Malaysia, now I swear we are having post a government uh, reform phase uh, after the uh, election in 2018, it could be different with the type of reform which we were talking about before the government change. So, based on your own experiences, what is actually the main differences? Before, at least we know that the word everyone were calling about reformacy since 1998, but that was more of a, uh, a political slogan. But now, reform is more could be more practical. What would be like the different uh, challenges? between before and what is going to happen uh, now in the current phase. So uh, I will start with Yang uh, Bohormat uh, Sari Sungai to briefly respond first and then I will pass over to the other speakers to, uh, to give comments. The reform movement, the reformacy movement has uh, always been inclusive. Nobody can stop you from being detained by the FRU, the police, the special branch or under the ISA. You can, it, the law is open for reformacy. Anybody brave enough to be, to be detained by the police, to be detained in the lockup? There are a thousand people. Even my wife was detained to the lockup, went to send to the uh, court for 10 years, and then finally, finally being fined for 500 ringgit. She ended up to be a hero, being fined for 500 ringgit. So it's inclusive. Anybody can come in. We have a website, we have a WhatsApp group. Everybody can come in. So, but to position yourself in terms of the proper agenda, unfortunately, the Pakatan Harapan Party is not that inclusive. Yeah, I'm a member of the party, but also given the chance to, to lead the reformists, the, the street, street, street fighters. But uh, to me, what we, what we want to create this reformist group, people who always remember reformacy, is to create a bridge between the political leaders of the reformacy, the four parties, with the riot. So we are the people who can understand, people in the, in the party, in the leadership, and the riot as well. But uh, there's a lack of consultation among the party leadership to the ordinary member. They make decision with the consultation. They don't impress uh, to the for, to the supporters that they, they value their time, their sacrifice. They think that as a political party, you are at the upper hand. So this is the, the weakness of Malaysian reform, reform movement as compared to, I think, the Indonesian struggle in back in early 1990s, or even in Iran, or even in Egypt, for the brief moment for Morsi. Uh, I've commented this, that uh, it's bad. How can you, when they want to deal with Tun Mahathir during the early part of our political compact with uh, Tun Mahathir, uh, he ca called for a session. People like Kim Kit Siang, people like Masabu Kim, at, as, personal, as personal capacity. Then after that, they come back to the party. The party says it's good. You don't mind. You can, can, can convince them that we the, our party support. So to me, Masabu or Lim Gun Eng or Anwar it will be or Kit Siang cannot be talking that they are taking their things at personal level. 
They are not, they do not belong to their family anymore. They do not belong to their party anymore. They belong to the riot. This must, our, our leaders must remember. Masapu is not only a member, a leader of Pati Amana. He's a member of, he's a leader of the whole party of, of Pakatan Harapan and the Rakyat. I, I can understand to this, to this stage why most of our leaders like this. They do, not, they do not put them down to the, the real meaning of reformacy as uh, what people in Indonesia believe until now. So that enriched reformacy in Indonesia, but that does not reach enriched uh, reformacy in Indonesia. That make party in Malaysia, political party, be more powerful. They are powerful towards ordinary member and the lesser higher ranking leadership of the party. So this is my comment. I still love my party. <coughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, what I shall uh, be presenting uh, from tomorrow, inshallah, is a slightly modified version of the module I used to teach to master uh, degree students at the Markfield Institute of Higher Education in the UK. And the idea is uh, to present the students with uh, uh, a review of how uh, political thinking and practice developed uh, in Islamic history. Uh, I usually begin with a background to the uh, environment in which Islam emerged, and that is Arabia. Uh, then we move to uh, the early, um, the, 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 the very beginning of the Islamic State in Medina. Uh, then to the rightly guided caliphate, which comes immediately after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In my uh, approach, I see, uh, I usually find uh, um, a turning point with the uh, uh, assassination of Ali radiallahu an and the assumption of Muawiyah <coughs> of power because that, as Hassan al-Basri used to say, was the fatal blow dealt to the concept of shura. Um, we can see from then on a struggle within uh, Islamic uh, scholarship uh, uh, circles to compensate for the loss of shura in practice and what sort of compensation they came up with until we come to uh, more recent times uh, and we uh, talk about revivalism and uh, the attempt to uh, uh, come up with a modern Islamic political uh, theory. So hopefully we'll be able to cover all of this uh, in the coming few, uh, few days. I'm giving four lectures over the next four days, and all of them deal with the theme of Islamic reform. Tomorrow, I'm going to be talking about, um, as you know from the program, one of the, in my view, most important, influential Islamic reformers of the modern period, um, Jamal ad-Din al-Afghani, whose uh, writings and whose analysis really shaped the, um, shaped the contours and the agenda for successive generations of Muslims grappling with the challenges of modernity in the 20th century. Um, the next person that I deal with in lecture two is someone who is perhaps less well known, although the Islamic Renaissance Front knows him very well because um, I was here last year speaking about him, and that is the UCLA uh, Egyptian-American scholar of Islamic law and, is and Islamic studies, uh, Professor Khalid Abu Fadl, whose most recent book called Reasoning with God um, deals with this entire project of Islamic reform. But in this discussion that I'll be having, it's, in, it's, it's a discussion that comes out of chapter eight of that book, dealing with the question of how um, modern Muslims fell into the trap of um, post-colonial apologetics, um, regressive thinking, and how that has 
been a process that has created in many ways a lot more problems than provided solutions. And related to that is the big challenge of the very corrupting effect and the spread of, um, of, of Wahhabi Islam and its uh, consequences. So that's lecture two. And then I deal with the process and the question of this intellectual development known as post-Islamism, the challenge of reconciling religion with human rights. And finally, I deal with one of the greatest, I think, Islamic reformers, someone who I think should be on the reading list of every conscientious Muslim. If there's one book that needs to be read in the context of Islamic reform, it is, the, it is the, what I consider to be a classic text. I wish we could read the entire book together and debate it. Um, and that is you know, Fazlur Rahman's um, famous book, Islam in Modernity, The Transformation of an Intellectual Tradition. Um, so I'm hoping that everyone has done the readings that were circulated. You still have time uh, to do the readings, but not much time because the first session begins in less than 24 hours. Um, mine also, uh, there are four topics. Um, my departure point is basically um, raising some of the key problems in the history and ecology of uh, the reform itself, especially my focus is on the Nusantara, Nusantara meaning the Malay Indonesian archipelago, uh, majority that uh, our participant here you are, and generally uh, I've noticed uh, many students, very good student of religion, very good student of society, they know quite a bit of the the theoretical dimension when it comes to uh, contemporary Islamic discourse, but uh, majority, I would say, uh, know very little what's happening in the region, right? Uh, good that you are convinced with um, whatever which is uh, the bigger Muslim heartland, but you cannot uh, initiate any reform or convince anyone if you don't know anything which is actually very near to you. And this is actually sometimes can be very embarrassing. Yeah? They call themselves activists and so on. But the moment the, the, uh, the, the local community or local groups ask them what has been going around in their own region, they seem to be not able to articulate. Uh, but the problem here also because of um, the nature of our uh, course, which is uh, you know just you know a, a number of hours, and also uh, the the medium. Most of this reformistic uh, expression in Nusantara is in Bahasa, be it in Bahasa Melayu or Bahasa Indonesia. I have a great problem to get those very good writings that are already translated into English. It's a real. Uh, I can choose any of your writing very easily, but you know, I'm glad that uh, our two professors here are, uh, have deal that part. But uh, those reform, as, as, as early as say, uh, even uh, Chokro Aminoto, I mean, we can't find, uh, not just in its English version, but even in Bahasa version, right? We cannot pick up at most bookstore. And this is, I think, a real gap. And I, I, I'm glad that the organizer uh, gave some thought about uh, this small area, but this is where you're going to live in. And these are the areas that you need to address uh, the real issue. So my, my, my departure point is, first of all, uh, to raise uh, the problem, or real problem that you see in uh, the reform movement or the reform agenda. Um, most of us, I think, here in this room are young activists. How do we translate later on the challenges? Uh, learning from all of us, how to translate it in your context to your local audience? I think that is the toughest. I mean, we can speak uh, fabulously, right? A high brow theory, medium level, whatever you call it. Uh, in class, in lectures, and in this kind of setting. But the no moment you go out there, right, I think the challenge is how all these critical concepts you are able to 
communicate. And I think this requires not just about reading, but your entire commitment and realignment of your very own mission of agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Azhar, Dr. Nadir, and also Professor Azam, Dr. Farouk, uh, Yang Bohormat, um, Saari Sungai, Pak Abu. So I think um, it is time for us to call it for the night for today at least. And tomorrow we're going to start quite early with our first session uh, at 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, of course, there's going to be breakfast uh, before our session um, starts uh, tomorrow. So, but still, anyway, I would like to call for one round of applause to all our speakers. And as uh, Dr. Nadir mentioned, there are still several hours to do a bit of reading, I guess, especially to capture the main key points. I'm sure that will contribute for a, a, a lively discussion for tomorrow's session. So um, we'll end it now and look forward for our session tomorrow. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and thank you.